you are very welcome back. Now, from as early as she can remember, our next guest took the presence of angels in her life for granted. Through her Dublin childhood, it was often tough. She experienced neglect and abuse, and the angels and the spirit world helped her to make her feel secure and cherished. Patricia Buckley has now chronicled her journey of acceptance of her gift in a new book called My Journey with the Angels, and she joins us now. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning. Um, from, from reading the notes, I gather your first... Um, manifestation or, or experience, proper crystallised experience, happened when you were nine and it involved a street accident. So could yeah. you give us, t tell yeah. us what happened? Well, um, I was sent to the shop um, for bread and milk and I had to be quick because, you know, my dad was uh, an alcoholic and quite violent. So um, mum said, you know, be really, really quick to get the bread and milk. And mum had uh, got a new pair of shoes, which she, she didn't normally have, you know, anything new. So um, when I was on my way out the door, I spotted the shoes and they were nice, bright, shiny. So of course I put them on me and I was clip clopping down the road out between uh, parked cars, didn't see the car. The car hit me. Um, but when it did, I just remember this presence around me and um, to be lifted up and um, placed basically on the path um, and that was my first experience with with the angels and that wasn't somebody who found the child on the street found you on the street and no, carried you to the pavement no, because the, the the driver of the car he'd go out and then he came over to me and because he remembered hitting me and i was taken to the hospital but you were okay but the force of the I, impact knocked you back onto the pavement yeah well you know uh, the shoes i mean the, one was this way one was another way so, like, it, what I was, it was an impact, but... And were you lying down on the pavement or were you standing up? I, uh, well, I was lying on the, on, the, on the road, and when I was lifted, I was placed on the, the footpath and I was lying down. So yeah. did the driver in the car see you being physically moved uh, from the road to the shock. pavement? He yeah, was in from shock. From what I can remember from yeah. what the adults were saying mm. was that, you know, he couldn't understand how I got from there to the path. Now, Patricia, you touched on your alcoholic father and mm -hmm. you, you had a tough yeah. life as a child. Just yeah. give people a flavour of mm -hmm. what you went through, just, just to explain, like, it was really tough for you now. Yeah, it was very, very hard. I mean, like, um, but I never hated Dad for it, you know. I, I mean, I knew something had made him uh, the man that he was. Um, and obviously, as a child, we, di we didn't know what it was, you know. It was very later on in, in life that we discovered um, Dad had been in Artane. And that was in, you know, after I got married, we found out. And that was quite traumatic for Dad um, and for us too. And it was then that I realised, you know, um, he turned out to be the man he was. And, you so know, you witnessed violence, you experienced mm, violence, mm, you were yeah. an neglected, abused child. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, there was no... He, I suppose he was fighting his own demons and... Um, he, he, um, his, his way was beating us and, and, and that's where it was. And, and when, when you moved into adult life though, you went or attached yourself to a man like that. I know. A man who nearly killed you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I, I done it because I believed that it was love. I was naive, I, I was 17. I mean, I believed it, what he was going to give me was love and, and, and it wasn't. And it turned out to be, he was there. Uh, extremely possessive um, and it was uh, the angels told me don't go with him and I didn't listen and I should have listened and yeah he it almost cost me my life. Yeah. Now you did meet a man, a wonderful man called Stephen. Stephen, yeah. And, uh, I uh, call him my guardian angel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you very happily married and a loving relationship and you've got uh, you've got a lovely family. Yeah with three beautiful children and four grandchildren. Yeah. Now in, in, in between <coughs> all of this yeah, you were also committed I was. Yeah. You were, and you also had uh, a long dependence on antidepressants. Yes, yes. So where were the angels during all this period? They were there, um, but because the uh, hospital convinced me I was mad, I continued on taking the medication. And um, when I'd come off it, the angels would come back to me. And when I had my children, my fear was that um, if I stop taking the tablets, they're going to take my children away from me. And I couldn't risk that, mm. you know, couldn't. So are you, are you still on medication now? No, 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 You're no. You're not? You're free no. of all of free that? Free of it, free. For yeah. 10 years or more now. Yeah, uh, yeah near enough now. Yeah. And okay. what about people who would say that um, 
the angels obviously were something that you created, which is natural for a child who goes through all the terrors mm -hmm. you did, mm -hmm. and somebody who went through such a tough life as mm -hmm. you. You created a safe haven for yourself, that it was a manifestation of your own need and longing for something to love you and offer you security mm -hmm. and cherish you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would say that as opposed to them actually existing. Yeah. How could you say to people, no, they're real, they're, they really do exist? They do. All I can say is that, yeah, they do exist because they have appeared to me, they helped me. Um, what do you see when they appear, Patricia? We're always fascinated by this. Yeah, but I do, do see bright lights sometimes, you know, um, sometimes they will manifest uh, uh, behind people. That sometimes happens. Uh, spirit world appear. I, I don't command them because that's wrong of me to do that. So you see a but, bright light? Yeah, it's a bright light that I would see. Um, and when they talk to you, yeah, what, yeah. It's, it's really, it's like, you know, when you look into this really bright light or you look up to the sun and it's really, really bright. It's blinding. And it's blinding. But it, in a way that it's very comforting and, and that's what it is. But spirit world, they appear to me just like I'm looking at you. It's just like I'm looking at do both of you. Do they speak to you? They do, yeah. What, what do they say? It depends. Um, I've been out and about at times and um, they've given me a message for somebody and which is, it's comforting for them, mm. you know, but I don't command them. How did they sound when they speak? The way they did what bef what, before they passed over. But does it sound, oh. Oh. Yeah. I, 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 no, no, I was, well, I'm not talking about the... the, the I'm talking about angels, the, yeah. We're talking about the, the angels themselves. How do they sound? Um, they're very uh, sweet voices. They're very, uh, they're very high. Their voices will be very high. So musical um, almost. It's almost like it. It's not musical, but it's almost mm. like it. Yeah, it's almost like and it. And when you say um, the angels told you not to go with the man who was very mm. violent towards yeah. you and almost killed you. Mm. Why didn't you listen to them? Because I was stupid, and I'm being really honest with you. I was stupid, and that's my whole point. I should have listened, and I didn't. I, at that time, I was saying, oh, look, come on, what would you know? He's really lovely. What would you know? And they begged me. And would me, you have a conversation with yeah, them like that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd have uh, at home on your own, I'm assuming? And it doesn't matter where I am, you know, they can be there, they'll just be there, you know. I'm looking at you now, yeah. and I can see the guardian angel behind you. And, you know... Do you know who my guardian angel she's is? She's laughing. You've, it's a female one, and she's laughing. And it, she's bubbly with you. And it's never, it's never negative, so always remember that. It's always positive. It's never, it's never um, negative. But you're quite a funny person, you see, so... You, you, you can be very mischief when you want to be. You get up to all sorts. And that's what your <laughs> angel's telling me. And uh, that's good. Tell that's my angel, stop giving away my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you... what she's saying to me. And, and that's good. Do we know? all have angels, Trisha? Everybody has can a Can you see angel. Mark's angel? Yeah. Yeah, and I Mark, can. What's his... and, and, you know, you come across as being quite serious. I'm going to be very honest with you, but you're not. You're, not, you're a very loving, uh, giving man, and that's what you are. You're very, very family orientated. Um, but like that, there's three angels behind you. You have three. three angels. There is three behind you. Mm. Yeah, and you're extremely, um, you're extremely caring man, and that's what they say to me about you. So you know. And are Mark's uh, angels female or male? He has uh, two male and one female. There mm. you go. So your angel, our guardian angels, are they people <coughs> who have known us in our lives, or? Are they angels who are somehow sent to us? How does it they work? They are sent to, we're all born with a guardian angel. Okay. Every one of us, our guardian angel's with us from the moment uh, we're conceived until we leave this life and go on to the next. And who sends you that angel, 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 Patricia? God does. God sends you that mm -hmm. angel? To every single person every in the world? Every single person. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad, you will have a guardian so angel. So where did Mark get the extra two from? The extra two came along um, f for for Mark, I believe, uh, because from what I'm seeing behind you, they came along in some traumatic times in your life. So they came along to, to guide you and to guard you and to keep you safe and give you strength and courage. Is, um, for you, is God a Catholic? Um, that's a hard one to answer, isn't it? Because mm. I do believe in God. Um, I'm not overly religious. I'm going to be very honest with you. I do say my prayers. I don't go to Mass unless there's an occasion. Um, so I, it, that's hard to answer that because yeah. I just believe everybody believes in God, you know. So We were saying in the break that angels are kind of big business now. There's angel yeah. shops and angel workshops. And yeah. Mark was even mentioning the links ad with the angels. The links ad right. is funny. Yeah, <laughs> it is funny. Um, but workshops, I, I, you know, I don't do them. 
I, I'm, I, I just believe everybody can connect with their guardian angel mm. themselves. It's so easy to well, do. Well, I have to say, the idea of having a guardian angel is possibly one of the nicest ideas. It is, is lovely because yeah. yeah. they're it's never negative. So they're there to help you. They're there to guide you on a positive level. Never. They'll never give you anything bad. Why would they want to do that? They wouldn't want to hurt you. They're there to, to make sure that you're Trisha, okay. Trisha, your book, My Journey with the Angels, is yeah. available now for anybody it who's is, interested. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be a yeah. big success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. We'll take the news now. Here's Siobhan Bastable.